Let's continue with part 10. All right, did you enjoy the musical? We certainly have. It was so heart touching. It, it was, and, and very uplifting, don't you think? Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, at this uh, joyous occasion, it is our immense privilege to invite our very special guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Let's now meet the real Tom. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Supreme Master Ching Hai, we wish you were here in person. We reserved a seat just for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Please thank all involved for me, please, one more time. Thank you so much, thank you so much. We watched an extraordinary musical, The Real Love, which was inspired by your poetry and just a part of your amazing personal journey. And for that, we want to thank you. We all loved it. We really did. Supreme Master Ching Hai, would you care to give us your thoughts on the musical? Wow. You make our world more beautiful with the music. Uh, I, I've been watching it. I've been hiding to watch it because I didn't want to impose my presence on this beautiful occasion until it was all done. Wow, it's like a miracle. Uh, all these uh, great names, great musicians, great composers, directors come together to create such a magnificent masterpiece. They are all so kind, so elegant. <laughs> wow, it was not for having to meditate now long hours. I would trade anything to come to see this. I would trade anything. But I had to stay here in order to continue meditation unbroken. A few hours, okay, but not like two, three days. Thank you so much again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's breathtaking. breathtaking. I'm sure the audience feel exactly the same as I do. Wow. My greeting, hugging, <laughs> embracing <laughs> to the great composers like Mr. Akasha, Mr. Doc Casaro, Mr. Don Pipping, Mr. David Shai, we met again, <laughs> and Mr. Bill County, who could not be here today, but I feel his love. He always has the talent of sending love, <laughs> even when he's not present. Thanks for your musical scores that really set our spirit soaring high and touch our hearts to the core. You really glorify love tonight. I appreciate all the kind words you have shared about my poems as well, personally and in the press. And I'm so honored that you wanted to bring to them the uplifting elements of song on this as on other occasions. And I thank you, Mr. David, for your music direction, as well as the orchestra musicians, so crisp, and so full of life. <laughs> that make us feel transported in time and space. Mr. Mark Norris, thank you as well for the genius choreography with dances of all kinds of styles that mesmerize us every second. I also appreciate you, Director Chris Shelton, for bringing the story to life so vividly <laughs> and movingly as you did, with all your detailed attention. I'm also deeply grateful for the government's kind support and the media's glorious comments. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I am touched also as an audience member by the work 
that so many professional artists poured into making this production, including all the greatly talented cast members, the guest stars, the all creative team and crew, such as the script writers, lighting technicians, costume and set designers, and the musicians. And I know you all have worked long hours together to make it the best. I am always grateful for the artists. What the artists do for our world, we cannot thank them enough. Without the artists, I mean all the artists, you know, composers, musicians, artists, actresses, actors, singers, dancers, <laughs> all these great and elegant people, kind-hearted, so pure, and so loving. These artists, they are doing wonderful things for our world, as they do for our innermost heart. So I want to applaud you, each of you, one by one, for the wholehearted effort and the love you have put into this gift you have shared with us, the world, in the form of this musical. I truly appreciate the honor that all of you, the brilliant artists, the great musicians, exceptional actors, actresses, singers, the legendary composer, etc. All your effort. May God bless you. Do I have still a little time or my time is up? <laughs> it's okay? Should I continue? It's your show. Yes. Okay. So I just share with you a little bit <laughs> of my thoughts. Over two decades ago, Le Yin, one of the Olasis, meaning Vietnamese, famous composers, translated one of my poems into a musical song. At that time, I was not in the Himalayas yet. I was still a householder, you know. Uh, the poem was called Like the Drifting Cloud. And one decade later, I knew about it. <laughs> I mean, all that time I did not know he put my poem into music. Uh, many people knew it, I didn't know. And then another famed musician glorified another of my poem titled Passing by Your House into a musical song. Also, I did not know it until half a decade later. Since then, many more such lovely surprises kept coming. When uh, they asked me if they could use the, you know, the latest poem, uh, The Real Love, to make into a song, I thought, okay, another song. But I did not imagine that in such a proportion like this. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed even just to know about mm -hmm. this program. All oh, these great people, I could not imagine. And all the lucky people in the audience there, face to face with these exceptional, great artists, talents, musicians, composers, I can only envy you. You know, this is kind of once in a lifetime that we can see all these great people together in one cast, in one musical. I can only envy you. But thank you for coming. Thank you. I can never thank all of you enough for your incredible loving dedication and support to art and love. This is the real love, your love. Love is the most precious thing in this physical realm. So we must protect love, be it the love between a couple, between parents and children, between friends, love between humans or love between animals, love between humans and animals or between animals and humans, be it even the love between plants and trees. They do communicate, they do love and protect each other as scientists have proven. You read about them, you know. Real love is what we need to protect our world, especially now. 
Whatever we love will blossom. Whatever loves us makes us grow in happiness. But love is not just a vocabulary. Love is action, invisible and visible. Love can flourish or be destroyed, even though the essence of love can never be destroyed. There are deeds that can nourish love. There are deeds that can make love wither and die. I mean, physical love. I mean, the love in this room. There are deeds that can make love grow. There are deeds that can make love diminish. We must cherish, treasure love. If we find it, support it. We have to support it with our thoughts, our speech, and actions. In any relationship, there must be always give and take. For example, between couple, it is not enough just to say "I love you." We should always take care to respect and help each other, like the first days, and even better every day. Knowing what the partner likes, we we'll try to offer that, and knowing what the partner doesn't like, we we'll try to avoid. Being considerate is the key to good relationship. Ah, listen to me, the one who left home. <laughs> But I know it works for you, who want to keep your relationship. I'm just uh, indulging myself to voice a few opinions. Any differences we should discuss till both agree or compromise. It's not really difficult to keep a relationship happy and thriving. If we have real love, selfishness and ego are the number one love killers. And my Lord, don't we see a feel like that? And then, when love is gone, we cry, we lament, we blame everything, everyone, including ourselves, and we could even punish ourselves with illness or even our life. But when we love on a bigger scale, for example, like our nation. Or our planet, or our world, then it's another story. That is the love like that of Jesus, a Buddha. Then we sacrifice personal happiness and personal love for others, be it humans or other species. Are you still there? So quiet. I thought I had put you to sleep. <laughs> Thank you for being awakened. Uh, it's about uh, you know three o'clock here in the morning. <laughs> I feel sleepy, so I thought maybe you are. Uh, be patient. I won't be long. <laughs> We can be and should be the example of love, like giving, caring, and harmonizing, so that when others think of us. Remember our names. They would feel happiness, love, comfort, and even noble, and their good quality will shine forth. We should not be the source of burden or misery to others in their thoughts, deeds, and speech. We have to be the source of inspiration, of nobility, and love, especially if we have been shown how by others' example. If we have love, all good will come our way. We can start to love now, today, and continue tomorrow into the future. Love yourself, love your family, love your neighbors, love all around us. Without love in our heart, we are almost nothing. Just a burden to ourselves, to loved ones, and society. Love is not a word on our lip. Love must be our feeling inside, and action translated outside. Love the animals, we be veg. Love the earth, we go green. Love the world, save the planet. I hope God will take into consideration <laughs> our sincere prayers.、Hmm? Then we can save the planet, but we should all be sincere and work together in unison, and one goal.
I've been very, very honored to meet Supreme Master Qingai. She's, she's an amazing woman. I admire her so much. And she definitely is the one who made me <laughs> change my life so deeply, my diet so deeply. And it's very nice because uh, the lyrics that Supreme Master wrote are very special and so true. And it's such a, a strong energy day. It's a, a very peaceful and creative and, and fresh atmosphere. I uh, congratulate the fifth anniversary to the Supreme Master Television and I had take this opportunity to say uh, hi to her. So thank you very much and hope to have a chance to hug you one more time. As soon as I got here, I felt this amazing love in the air. And honestly, I had no idea Mr. Shanghai was so talented and she could do so many things. Wow, I mean, everybody's got to see her art. It's filled with light, love, it's beautiful. And uh, you, can, you can tell where her heart is in her art, because her art is really, it's the image of the soul. I just finished uh, Snow White in Montreal with Julia Roberts playing the bad guy, the Baron. And uh, I was nominated years ago for the Oscar for Barton Fink. And uh, I was very happy to be invited to this event. Unfortunately, my son, who is the vegan, is off to Burning Man right now. So my other son is here, and he likes the mock sushi. Supermaster Ching Hai is a remarkable lady. I mean, she's very holy, but um, not in any formal religious way. I was very impressed by that. But I thought all the performances were amazing. Is there a song that you liked in particular? Real Love. But I liked a lot of her poetry as singing. It reminded me of Bob Dylan. I liked that. It was real, it was committed, it wasn't phony, and I felt uh, the instincts of the actors and of her personal journey was true. Well, I thought uh, Master Ching Hai's speech was wonderful and very illustrative of the musical. Her passion for love. You know, as an expert in, in our the human effects on climate, I just want to share with her that, that I really appreciate her leadership in trying to bring that message to the world. The science is, is all too real, and to have someone like her that is trying to, to give the right message to people, I think is really, really outstanding. I spent years working at Radio City, which is a pretty big venue for shows, 6,000 people at seats. But I have never experienced anything of the size of the real love with such a short amount of time, because at Radio City, our shows were started planning at least a year and a half to two years in advance, and then we had at least six weeks of solid rehearsal. This was speeded up reality, and it worked. I felt something very unusual about being around the rehearsal of The Real Love, and that was a certain sort of serenity. Everybody seemed to feel this will be all right, and indeed it was. I had no idea what the other composers were doing, but it all seemed to hold together. It was like, that's the way it was supposed to be. And that's what I mean by that silent kind of calmness. You had somebody looking over you on this, more than just the composer. Not only did I love the way she said things, but I loved the sound of her voice. She is so comforting. She has the thing I'm saying I sensed about the theater, this tranquility this ease, but she was so gracious to every department of the show. I was just, I loved hearing her, her talk. You really felt like you were in a living room visiting with her. I was really shocked how much younger she looked, and it wasn't the lighting or anything, it was her face. She generates within herself this wonderful, and it was like three in the morning, wherever she was. And she looked lovely and her voice sounded so rested. It seems that meditation does accomplish a great deal. If I were in her presence, I certainly would express to her my great appreciation for her caring about performers and the importance of recognizing what we do. And bless Supreme Master Ching Hai for having that attitude toward artists. We need it. It helps us be better.
noble viewers, we appreciate your company today for The Real Love, a musical that unites hearts, part 10 of a multi-part series. Please join us again on Tuesday, June 29th for part 11.